Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the HP Pavilion X360 14. This is a 14-inch Windows laptop that sells for about $699 or less, depending on where you get it. And it's one of these two-in-ones that can go into display mode or can work as a tablet or you can put it into tent mode or something like that as well. And it's a pretty attractive looking device here that uh, seems to be pretty decent for the price point. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from HP. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This one's got an i5 processor, an 8265U from Intel. That's a quad-core chip. It has 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. It is not, though, easily upgradable. It's possible, just not easy to do. Uh, so you do have to pry open the bottom portion of the case here. There is some risk of damage when you do that. And then it looks like the RAM and storage are actually on the reverse side of the motherboard. So there is a bit more work involved here to get things upgraded. So my advice to you would be to look at the one that you want that has the configuration that you want and don't plan on upgrading it later unless you are really not afraid of digging into these things and uh, taking a lot of it apart to get at those components. Uh, so again, this one's about $699. Best Buy occasionally has it for $599. At the time I'm shooting this, the $699 version was the only one that I saw. Uh, there are two colors available. Uh, there's also an i3 version with the same RAM storage and display configuration for $499. And then there is a version with 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of solid state storage that you can get uh, for around $7.99 or so. So there are a few different options out there, and there might be more too if you dig around on HP's site or look at other retailers. I found with these devices, a lot of times different retailers get different configurations at different prices. Uh, so if you shop around, you can find the exact version that you're looking for. Uh, the display is pretty nice. It's a 14-inch 1080p IPS touch display, as you can see. Uh, touch is important, of course, because this can operate in tablet or display mode. So it seems to be working pretty well here as you're moving windows around and whatnot. Uh, because it's IPS, you get decent viewing angles on it. And because it's 1080p, the movies that you watch on it should also look pretty nice. Overall, I'm pleased with how it looks compared to other computers in its price range. It's pretty bright, not as bright as a more expensive laptop might get you, but it's good enough, I think, again, uh, based on where it sits in the marketplace here. The weight on this one is 3.42 pounds or 1.5 kilograms. Uh, that is a bit on the heavier side, although I found a lot of these mid-range two-in-ones tend to be a little bit heavier. Uh, the good news is that the battery life isn't bad on it. Uh, we're looking at in our testing about eight to 10 hours if you're doing web browsing, word processing, office tasks, all that kind of stuff. I think you should be able to get a decent day's work out of it, provided you keep the display brightness down a bit. If you're gaming or doing video editing or Photoshop, uh, that, of course, will eat into the battery uh, much more. So I think it's really going to be dependent on the kind of work you are doing, which, of course, is what I always like to remind people about when they are shopping around for a laptop. But the battery life on this one seems to be pretty good. Let's take a look now at the keyboard, trackpad, and some of the ports that are available. So why don't we begin with the keyboard? It is a backlit keyboard with two levels of brightness to it. Uh, the keys are adequately sized and adequately spaced, and I was able to start typing on it right away without having to get used to it, and that's always a good sign for me because I am a touch typer and can uh, really get thrown off by a non-traditional keyboard quickly, so this was an okay keyboard in my book. Uh, the travel here is decent, as you can see. The keys do push down a bit, so it's got a good feel to it. Uh, you also have the home page up, page down, and end keys here on the side, so you can do some additional navigation without having to go down to the trackpad. Uh, the trackpad itself feels very nice as well. It's nice and wide here, uh, very responsive, and really no problems with it at all. You also have a fingerprint reader here for very quickly getting into the computer when it is locked. Now, the keyboard deck here is aluminum, and the rest of the laptop is plastic, the uh, display portion here and the bottom portion. And it's got a pretty cool two-tone design. It might be kind of hard to see here on camera, uh, but this portion is a little more gold than the lower portion is. Again, subtle, but pretty neat. 
and the uh, darker version of the laptop will also have a similar two-tone design to it. Uh, the speakers are located here at the top, which I like because a lot of laptops lately have been using these downward firing speakers and oftentimes the sound will be different depending on what surface the laptop is resting on. Here it is always consistent. Not a lot of bass to the speakers, but they're nice and crisp and clear. There's a lot of detail to the sound and there's some decent stereo separation on them as well. Uh, so overall, it's a, a nice little package, especially if you are watching movies or doing video conferences or that sort of thing. Uh, it's got a webcam here at the top. You cannot use it for getting into the computer, but it's otherwise adequate. I think it's a 720p HD camera. Now for ports, you've got a bunch on here. On the left-hand side, you've got a full-size USB 3.0 port along with a headphone microphone jack. Uh, this is the exhaust for the fan. The fan isn't all that loud, uh, but it will, of course, kick on when you put the computer under load. And the more strenuous the load, the louder the fan is going to get. It's not really awful. It's certainly audible when it's under uh, that kind of load, but it's no worse than any of the other laptops that I've looked at. But it's not a fanless laptop, so just keep that in mind. Generally, though, I found it stays off if you're doing word processing and some light web browsing. You'll hear it kick on again when you start doing a little bit more with it. And a lot of times, it's just running at a very low level. Uh, your power standby switch is over here. You've got a Kensington lock here for locking it down on a desk, so good for kids going off to college. Now, on the other side here, you've got a full-size SD card slot. And the cool thing is that the SD card uh, will sit flush to the case here, so it doesn't stick out all that much. Uh, it will pop out if you press down against it because it is spring-loaded, but it is good to see the card not sticking halfway out, and that gives you some additional options for augmenting the onboard storage. So you can load up your movies and stuff on here and take it on a flight with you. Uh, next to it is a hard drive indicator light, which is something we don't see all that often on a laptop these days. And sometimes this is helpful to see if the laptop is locked up or actually doing something uh, because you'll see that light blinking whenever the internal hard drive is in use. So that was cool to see. Uh, next to this uh, SD card slot, you've got a USB Type-C port. Now this will do data and video, but not power delivery. So if you plan on using one of those docking stations, you'll still need to connect up the AC adapter to get the laptop charged and powered. Uh, but you will be able to get your display output through here and connect up your USB-C devices too. Uh, you've got another full-size USB 3 port here, a full-size HDMI output, and your power connector goes in right there. So let's take a look now and see how this laptop performs. We'll take a look at some of the basics, look at some gaming, and then I'll make some recommendations. So we'll begin with some web browsing, and we loaded up the nasa.gov homepage. Uh, the laptop, of course, has AC wireless on board and can very quickly browse the internet, of course, and everything seemed to be working fine there. Uh, we also loaded up my YouTube channel and looked at a 60 frames per second 1080p video. Uh, that, as expected, also ran just fine. No drop frames. Everything looked great on the 1080p display and all was good on that front. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 152 on version 1.0 of that test and 89.8 .8 on version 2.0. That has this one running just slightly slower than two other machines we've looked at running with the very same processor. It was not something we noticed while browsing the web, and I don't think it's something any of you would notice in day-to-day -day activity, but it did benchmark slightly slower than some other devices that are similarly equipped, and that's something we saw on a few of the other benchmark tests that we'll get to in a minute here. So let's move on now to gaming, and remember, this is not a gaming laptop, and as such, games will not do very well on it. Uh, Fortnite here, we turned down to the lowest possible resolution and the lowest possible settings. Uh, so at 480p, we were getting between 20 and 50 frames per second. Uh, the laptop lacks a discrete graphics processor, which is why it performs the way it does here. Uh, we did a little bit better with Rocket League uh, at 1080p, but at the lowest settings, we were getting between 40 and 50 frames per second. That one did a little better. And then older games will run quite nicely on here. So Half-Life 2, which came out around 2004 or so, was running at 60 plus frames per second at 1080p. So if you are a fan of older retro games, uh, no issues here with uh, this kind of computer. But these machines really, again, don't do well with the things that are out there and popular now. 
Uh, you'll want to look at a laptop that has that discrete graphics processor on board to be able to make use of some of the games you might want to play on it. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 6,757. And just like the other benchmark test we ran a few minutes ago, uh, the HP here is running slightly behind what we saw out of two other laptops running with the very same processor. It's a slight difference, not significant, and given that most games won't run well on any of these machines, it's not going to be something all that noticeable, but we are seeing a just slight performance difference here between this one and some of the others. And on the 3D Mark stress test, which measures how well the computer can handle itself under load, we got a failing score of 94.6%. 97% is passing, and what this means is that if you were doing a lot of heavy-duty video editing or maybe running a very intense video streaming uh, session or something, you could see performance drop off the longer you conduct that activity. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind if you really are looking at some high-end performance tasks that you might want to do on this. Uh, but if you are doing light streaming with maybe two overlays or something like that, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. But just know that you will see a little bit of performance throttling with this one the longer it is placed under load. And we also booted up Kodi and downloaded the Jellyfish test file that we like to run, an HEVC file, 4K, 140 megabits per second at 10 bits, and everything decoded just fine on here. We do like to run those tests to make sure all the Intel uh, video decoding stuff is working properly and all was good there. And we also booted up Ubuntu 19.04 on here. Uh, things seem to work for the most part. You've got video working here, the touch uh, display is being detected properly and you can even uh, most of the time type on the screen here with it. Uh, so that was a good experience mostly. It's a little glitchy but seems to be working okay. Uh, the one thing that did not get detected though was the Wi-Fi. The Bluetooth worked, but not the Wi-Fi. We saw this on a few other laptops we've looked at recently too. So there might be a driver out there for it, but it doesn't look like it's going to detect it out of the box. Uh, but everything else appears to be working, including audio. So if your intent is to do some Linux on here, you might need to get a USB networking adapter to do it. Uh, if this was an easier machine to upgrade, you might be able to pop it open and swap out the card that's inside, but generally I think it's not going to be the best solution for Linux unless you hook up one of those USB adapters to it. But overall, not a bad little laptop here. I think it's competitive with other mid-range two-in-ones that are out there. I like the build quality. The speakers are very nice here where they're located. Uh, there is a slight uh, performance disadvantage versus some of the other i5 based machines we've looked at recently, but it's not a significant one. And overall, I think it's a solid offering here from HP that is very much in line with many of the other laptops that are out there at around the same price point with uh, similar configurations here. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.tv supporters, including gold level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast emudev.org Tom Albrecht Brian Parker and Kalyan Kumar If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.